Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be documenting how I wrote a game from scratch using nothing but Java and OpenGL in one month for the GitHub Game Off 2020. I can see you're a bit confused. Well, what is the GitHub Game Off 2020 you may ask? First of all, it's kind of a mouthful, but what else can we call it? Maybe the GHGO 2020? Nah, I'm just going to stick with the original name. Well, it's a game jam, an event where organizers will bring together a group of game developers with a time limit and a theme. The developers can then use the whole time to design, make, program, and test a game that fits that theme. Usually these jams are actually quite a challenge with the time limits being between 24 hours and a week, but this jam was a month. However, don't let that take away from the difficulty of it because once we saw the theme, my fellow jam participants and I knew we were in for a surprise. Even though I've been making games for years and programming for even longer, this was my first jam, so when I saw the theme of Moonshot, I was understandably perplexed. Luckily, the organizers of the jam included definitions and interpretations of the theme, such as Moonshot, an extremely ambitious and innovative project. However, what really caught my eye was the term Moonshot Thinking, defined as a type of thinking that aims to achieve something that is generally believed to be impossible. I had my idea. Next, I had to make the game. I was about to boot up my old pal Unity engine when an idea popped into my head. It was as if the voice of a supreme intelligent being was speaking directly to me. I could either make a good, polished game in Unity, or I could make an engine from scratch using Java and have a mediocre game at the end. I think you know what I chose, but why Java you ask? Well it's simple. If second grade history class taught me anything, it's that the constitution basically says three things. One, be free, two, eat some nice food, and three, use Java. So yeah, that's why. I started by creating a new Java project in VS Code and initialized it with the Git repo. Then I brought in LWJGL, the Java port of OpenGL that I'm going to be using. I was following a guide as I haven't really done this type of thing before, and within a few minutes I was able to load up a simple mesh with a quad. Not long after, I had a cube, and before I knew it, I had transformations and a camera system working. Before we go any further, let me talk you through my idea. Well, moonshot thinking is something impossible, right? The idea that I came up with was when pigs fly. Yeah, very big brain. It's a phrase used to describe something impossible. But I had an issue. That was literally all I came up with. I had no idea of the gameplay mechanics at all. But I decided that I would finish building the engine part and by the time I was ready to make the real game, I would have some ideas. Since my other option was Unity, I decided to model the core engine features off of those found in that engine, such as loading models, creating scenes, camera movement, and input. Loading textures took some time to figure out, but when I used the PNG decoder library and learned how texture coordinates work, it was a breeze. Essentially, you map out certain vertices on your object to certain points on their texture and OpenGL figures out the rest for you. Next up was loading models. Up until now, I was defining the cubes with each of their vertices, indices, and texture coordinates by hand. Just for a simple cube, it's pretty complicated, so this method definitely won't work for any other, more complex objects. Enter the OBJ file. These files are essentially text where each line gives information about a model. Lines prepended with the letter V, for example, indicate that the line contains a vertex. In total, these files give you loads of information such as vertices, faces, indices that can be derived from faces, texture coordinates, normals which are used for lighting, and a plethora of other information about the model. I wrote some code for an OBJ loader and ta-da! Now we have pigs. Next up, I began working on some very basic UI. I tried a bunch of different methods, some of which were honestly just bad, but eventually settled on an orthographic projection matrix. It kind of worked, but I set my hopes higher and tried to make a responsive user interface for different screen sizes. That surprisingly turned out really well, and I ended up using it in my end product. Once that was working, I created a blanket scene architecture with a canvas and an array of entities that are dynamically loaded and even created a cool transition between the scenes. I was on a roll, it had only been one week and I'd completed the entire engine. Now I just had to keep this momentum going for the next three weeks and finish strong with a good game at the end. And then I didn't touch this project until the last week of the jam. Yes, I had wasted two weeks of potential work time, but I didn't let that stop me from finishing with the game. I quickly got to work on a terrain generation system. Much to my dismay, however, I learned that ignoring lighting from the beginning finally came back to bite me. 
I tried several workarounds, some of which were actually insanely genius. For example, I loaded a terrain model into Blender, went into the top view, took a screenshot of the shaded terrain, then used that as my texture. I was so proud of myself for coming up with it, and it actually worked, but I didn't like how cheap it felt. Plus, it wasn't exactly an expandable system. I eventually put on my programmer, aka copy and paster, pants, and stole some lighting code from online. After a lot of tweaking to make it work with my situation, I finally had lighting. I then implemented height map terrain generation, and now I had a simple model of what looked like the Grand Canyon in my scene. Next up, I found a simple glider model on Google Poly and put it on my pig. I then implemented basic flight moon rain to control the tilt of the pig in all directions. Next up, physics. Now I'm no rocket scientist, but I do know of something called gravity that makes us go down. To simulate it, I subtracted from the pig's y value on each loop iteration. For the actual movement of the pig, I decided to create a normalized movement vector. The idea behind this is that it's basically an arrow pointing in the direction the pig is moving, and the magnitude of the vector I defined to be proportional to the vertical rotation of the pig. I then was able to add and subtract from each individual axis of the vector based on how the pig was oriented and was able to achieve the flying feel I was looking for. After some more polishing, I finally had proper movement. Now, I needed a way for the player to die. No, no, not like that. I mean collision detection with the terrain. I tried a couple of different solutions, but still, after three days, it didn't work. I copied code after code from online, trying everything I could. Eventually, I gave up and wrote a very basic solution with no interpolation. Here's how it worked. Essentially, I was tracking the position of the player in world coordinates. I had to then map these coordinates over my 20x20 height map because it was meant to be a low poly design. Then, I checked for the nearest height map square on the grid, extracted the height from it, and checked if the pig's y value was greater than that. It came out being really scuffed, and to be honest, some parts of the game are unplayable because of it, but I had 3 days left in the jam, so I just went with it. I then spent about a day working on a main menu and a death screen, trying to figure out ways to properly lay it out while abiding to the rules of my responsive UI. At this point, the game was playable, but pretty buggy. The flying wasn't perfect, the mesh loading was eh, and the terrain collision detection was straight dog sh**. But I powered through. I realized that I should probably make an executable version of my game before the last day to make sure that it's actually possible and all my work wouldn't have been in vain. That turned out to be a smart choice because I spent the whole next day debugging and learning about the new features of Java 11, along with cursing at my VS Code for using a different version of Java than my system. Eventually, and finally, I figured it out. I didn't want to require the users to have Java on their system to run the game. I could export the project as a jar, but you would still need the Java executable to launch it. Java versions 13 and up included a tool called JPackage, which allows users to compile their projects directly to native executables. However, since I was using Java 11 and I was on a time crunch, I had to resort to using a different feature called JLink. JLink allows users to create a very minimal and legally distributable version of the Java runtime environment. With JLink, I was able to create Unix executables for each actual Java process on my computer. Then I wrote a simple shell script to run the jar file through the JLink created Java runtime. Once I made the executable from the script and set up the folder structure, the game was now distributable and able to be run on macOS, albeit with a few antivirus errors. I didn't mind them too much as I was the one who wrote the code, but I could see how it could pretty easily annoy some potential players. I did the same process on a Windows machine, and it was pretty similar, except that there were less warnings. Hmm, I wonder what that says about the security of each platform. But I digress. Everyone already knows of the macOS master race. I didn't make too many more changes until I finally uploaded the game to the itch.io page and submitted it. I had finally finished. After a month of hardly working, <laughs> I mean hard work, I had completed the game. It was a pretty exciting moment. I had written the game engine entirely from scratch and had built up an entire game from it. I was even able to learn about building executables to run it on all platforms. It really was pretty cool. Alas, we have reached the end of the video. Let me know if you liked the new video format and if you have any suggestions or questions about it in the comments below. If you liked it, hit that like button. If not, I guess you can use that other button too. Either way, subscribe for more content and have a great day, or week, or month, or until whenever I upload again. Alright, bye.